Hi there, welcome back to Northlight Photographic Workshops. Today we're going to have some fun doing something a little bit out of the ordinary, and that's making a palladium print using a flashlight. Now this just isn't an ordinary flashlight, this is a UV flashlight. Now I came by this last summer when I was uh, going to do a video up in Michigan's Upper Peninsula along Lake Superior about trying to find the Uper lights. Now Uper lights are a rock formation that's been discovered in northern Michigan and certain parts of these rocks are fluorescent and are, will fluoresce and so people have been buying these and searching along the beaches for the lights and I thought I would do a video on this and have a little bit of fun. Unfortunately I never found any and uh, I didn't put the video out and uh, I just kind of put this away and forgot about it. Well lately as you might know I've been building a UV light source uh, out of LED lights and if you haven't seen that yet there's a, a link to the first episode up here now I've been building this uh, box with uh, UV light strips and it's supposed to give me very short uh, printing times. Now what I was doing is I was trying to source some of these UV strips and I was looking up 360 nanometer lights, um, which is the optimum wavelength for printing the way that we print. Uh, and this light popped up and I remembered I have one of those. So I decided to dig it out and give it a try. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to see if this actually really works. And if it does, this is going to be an extremely inexpensive way for people to at least get into alternative process printing because the box that I'm building right now uh, is it's going to be very powerful and it's a little bit more substantial than most people would use, but it's still going to cost me a little over $1,000 to build. This flashlight was less than $30. So we'll see if it works. I'm going to take it into the dark room. I'm going to rig it up on a tripod. I'm going to coat a piece of paper and we're going to make an exposure. Now I've made a negative, a digital negative um, in about a three inch by three inch size to make this print because at a certain height, that's about the cone of uh, the, the circle of light that I get on this. And I want to try to get a nice print without any fall off if it's going to work. So what I'm going to do is make a negative. We're going to take that negative into the dark room. I'm going to rig this up. We're going to coat a piece of paper. We're going to see if this really works. And like I say, if it does, this could be a really great source for some of you out there that are trying to get into these processes and don't want to spend an arm and a leg for a UV exposure unit to find out if you like it. So with that, let's get into the dark room and see if this works. All right. Okay. So as you can see, I've uh, used my tripod here and what I've done is used a little bit of gaffer's tape to attach the flashlight to the tripod. So when I turn it on at this level it gives me a cone of light that's probably about six inches and uh, I mean of course it spills over larger but that's kind of the most intense light right in there. So that should be perfect for doing the two and a quarter negative that I've made. So uh, yeah I think this is going to be good. I've got the timer here so that I can time my, uh, my exposure. Uh, obviously it's not attached to the timer so I'm going to have to keep tabs on it. So, uh, yeah, with that, let's go over there to the other side of the dark room. We're going to coat a piece of paper and we'll get on with this exposure. So I've got my negative here and I ended up going with just a three inch square because I was able to measure that cone of light and see that I had about three inches to work with. So anyway, what I'm going to do is mark my paper like I usually do just on the corners of the image, just so I know where I'm coating. Now the thing is, I'm not going to be uh, masking this off uh, this time. Um, I mean, I know I like to get a lot of nice clean edges like this, but uh, I'm going to go with something more like this right now because I don't want to take the time to mask it if this really isn't going to work. So I have my corners here and what I'm going to do is set up a, I'm going to use three drops of each of my solutions. That's palladium. This is the ferric oxalate. I use equal amounts of each. That was three drops there. Now this is a little bit of tween, which is a uh, emulsifier. I'm just going to put one drop in. Now this helps me to, it helps the um, emulsion flow on the paper a little bit better. So here we go. Got my corners marked. There they are. Okay. So what I'm going to do is try to keep it within my, my dots here, just so that I'm not wasting a lot of palladium off on the sides. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's the right amount to use. There, got a nice even coat. I'm gonna dry this, wash my brush, and then we are going to go back over to the other side and make our exposure. Got a nice coating on here. So let's get the, uh, the negative on top. As you can see, I put more than enough palladium coating on there. Now let me get my, uh, and we will set this up inside of our print frame. Hold it into place, put the back on, and the restrainer. We're ready to go over to the other side and make our exposure. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna get everything centered under here nicely, and I'm gonna get my timer set up at uh, 10 minutes here. Uh, and let's see, I think we're ready to go. So let's do it. Ready? Exposure on. I can center that up a little bit more. There we go. Timer on. 10 minutes. We'll see what's happening here. Fingers crossed. Well, hey, I'm monitoring this and I'm going to shut it off at five minutes because I can see here that the uh, latent image here, it, it's, it's actually a lot more powerful than I thought it was and it is working. So, uh, this is going to be interesting. So I'm shutting it off right now at five minutes and uh, let's see what we've got here. Oh yeah, see I can see a bit of an image in there right now. So let's take this over and develop it and see what, see what we have. So this is pretty cool and I've just made an exposure here that I think is going to work. So let's see what happens. I drop it down here into the tray. And hit it with the potassium oxalate. Here we go. <laughs> oh yeah. That's, <laughs> that's pretty amazing. Okay, so as you can see, I've made myself a nice little print there. Now I can tell that it's not the curve is correct. You know, I mean, I would have to correct this and do some tests with this a little bit further, <laughs> but, but it's pretty amazing. Let me see here. I'll, Pick it up. Check it out. It's from Iceland. Yeah. So it worked really good. This is fantastic. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to wash this thing, dry it, take a closer look, and uh, we'll come back here and finish this out. I don't think I'm going to go through and test it out in this video. I just wanted to show you that this can be done. I want to show myself that it could be done. It's pretty cool. All right, so those of you that want to do this, don't have a light source, go and pick yourself up one of these uh, flashlights. All right. <laughs> I can't get over it. It's pretty cool. All right, I'll be back. Well, there you go. Success. We've done it. Uh, I didn't really think it was going to work, to be honest with you. I figured that a uh, less than $30 light was not going to be truly UV and that it wasn't really going to give us good exposure. But it did in fact, and it's quite beautiful to be honest with you. Um, of course, it doesn't have the specific curve uh, made for this light source and this paper right now, but that would be easy enough to do as long as you set it up at a certain distance and keep it at that distance and keep the same exposure all the time and you build your curve based upon that. So I may go through that in future videos, but for right now, I'm just going to leave it safe to say that this actually works. And uh, I think that this is really going to open up a lot of doors for you that are uh, watching these and wanting to try these processes without having to put out the money to buy a, um, you know, a professional exposure unit or even to do your own at, at great expense. So yeah, I'm going to leave a link below for this. I got this uh, up at a hardware store in Northern Michigan but they're available on Amazon. I'll give you a link to it. Like I say, they're less than 30 bucks. Um, I highly advise anybody that's doing this that doesn't want to get a larger exposure, exposure unit right now and does want to find out if they like doing this process, get yourself one of these and save yourself buku bucks. So yeah, with that, 
I'm going to leave you. I hope you like this. Give me a thumbs up uh, if you liked it. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. And honestly, tell a friend. If you have any friends that are interested in these alternative processes, tell them because this is going to open up a lot of doors for people. So yeah, there you go. Thanks a lot for your, uh, your time. And I hope you have a good time doing your own prints. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.